let's say we want to screen print this ourselves. What you would do is, let's get rid of this bottom example here. So let's take this graphic. If I click on just the orange to uh, yellow color, you'll see that it's 9.9 .9 inches by 5.8 inches. So roughly just under 10 by six. So what we can do is let's go into Photoshop and let's create a new document, a new image. And what we wanna do is let's go to inches here and let's make it 10 by six. And we want our pixels per inch to actually be really high. And that's because your printer that you're printing your films with sometimes can be capable of printing up to say 1200 pixels per inch. So let's click create. And all we do is we got our foreground and our background color, black and white. Just click on our gradient tool and hold down your shift key and drag up or down. Uh, you could drag left to right if you want a gradient going left to right. But I'm just gonna change this to image mode grayscale. Click discard and then image mode bitmap. So here's the tricky part. We have our input and output resolution at 1200 pixels per inch. Method, we're gonna use half time screen, click OK. Now, what we wanna do is I have a website pulled up here, Atlas Screen Supply, uh, their blog. They have a blog post called Choosing the Right Mesh and Half Tone Dot. So you can Google that if you wanna look at it. But let's say we have, we know we have a 196 mesh count screen. Like the silk, the silk screen is 196. So what we wanna do that with that is divide it by 4.5. So if you are running, say, a 230 mesh or a 305 mesh or a 156 mesh, you divide that by 4.5. But let's say we're using the, the 196. So that gives us 43.5 lines per inch. And that's essentially the smallest dot that we can print with without there being kind of more problems or just weirdness when we go to use this halftone pattern with our uh, screen print. So let's go back to Photoshop. Remember that 43.5 number? And I've got it typed in here because I did a little practice right before I made this video. Um, so type in there in frequency, you type 43.5 lines per inch. Angle, I'm just gonna put 30 degrees in there. Shape can be round, it can be ellipse, you can do a line, but I'm just gonna leave it at round and click OK. So, you know, this is a pretty small dot, so if you zoom in, you can see that. So what we wanna do is let's save this. Let's just save it on our desktop. Uh, and I'm gonna call it half tone 43.5. And you can save it as a Photoshop, PSD, or a TIFF file. I'm just gonna leave it a PSD file. Let's click Save. And let's go back into Illustrator. And let's just change this gradient now to a solid color. And if you're really doing things right, you would use a Pantone or you would make a swatch but I'm just using kind of an RGB color. And let's go file, place, and let's go to our desktop, find that halftone file. We got a lot of stuff on there. Halftone 43.5.psd, click place. And then when you click to place it in, it will be that 10 by six. So it's slightly bigger than our lettering. And let's go ahead and assign this a color. And the, the cool thing about these bitmaps, actually let me zoom in a little bit here. The cool thing about these bitmaps is they are automatically transparent. You can assign them a color. So if I assign it a yellow, you can see that you know where it goes to white in the Photoshop file, it's now transparent when you bring it into Illustrator. And I'm just gonna send that to the back behind everything and let's click on just this orange part of our lettering. And let's go Command C to copy it, and then Command F to paste in front. Now, 
the thing we want to do is we want to make this lettering a compound path. So let's go to object compound path make shortcut as command eight or control eight if you're on a PC. And so we have that compound path selected. Let's shift select the yellow bitmap gradient back there and then go command seven or the long cut for that is object clipping mask make. And now you'll see that bitmap in there. The thing we don't want to do since we're going with the smallest possible dot is we don't want to resize this bitmap. But you know, let's say you, you actually wanted to see the half tone dots. You know, you could scale this up if you want. You know, then you see the half tone dots in there. I'm just going to undo that. But that is how you make half tone dots or one of the many ways to make half tone dots uh, for screen printing.